I can those, uh, what can I bring? I didn't know. I may have that slide too. Actually, this 2012 alone, there will be a shortfall of $317 million. So, um, if we don't put the economic cap, um, it's going to be, uh, it's projected to, the scholarship program itself projected to, to be vanishing pretty, pretty quick. Um, and uh, and uh, one thing, one of the facts that I noted is that today's mm -hmm. freshmen or today's sophomores will probably only have about 50% of the HOPE scholarship if something isn't done uh, up to change. And, and I was in a radio show Thursday morning um, talking about our rally um, and talking about Hope Scholarship. Um, I was really surprised people who called in, a lot of them didn't know that we actually had an income cap. Uh, they thought it, there was never an income cap. So uh, uh, the opposition to income cap is, okay, it's all, all for merit-based. Yes, it is merit-based. But if we don't do anything, um, people who um, really on low income category, there is a very high chance those kids are not going to complete their degree. Um, so um, really, we need to contact the legislators, and and we need to do it as quick as possible because um, <coughs> basically. Uh, you know, when we have asked them to save hope scholarship or do something about unemployment, truly if the, the scholarship program collapses, it's going to really affect the economy really bad. But when we're asking them to strengthen the hope scholarship, they're writing laws how you can carry on in the campus. They're asking you to pee in a cup <coughs> if you lost your job or go do volunteer work when you lost a job. So definitely they are not for, they are up for something else. So um, we, we have to do something, and we have to do something pretty fast. But I thank you, I, and, and I especially thank everybody that have worked to make this possible, Miss um, Emma, Johnny, and Miss Betty, and Janice for traveling all the way from Atlanta. Thank you all very much. Wanted to make a comment sure. on top of uh, what you said. Um, the, and many times in the Senate you hear that the scholarship was created so that every Georgia student who earned top grades would receive the scholarship. That's not how it was created. It was created, Zell Miller created the scholarship to make sure that bright students who would other find, otherwise find it difficult to attend college found their way to a college diploma. And, you know, the basis for that, and this is a pretty new policy brief here, the basis for that is that by 2020, an estimated 61% of all jobs in the state will require a career or a certificate or a college degree, but only 34% of adults in Georgia have an associate's degree or higher. So, I mean, this is an economic thing. It really and truly is. An, a, a, saving hope is, is in many ways about helping to save the economy in Georgia. It is. And those jobs, yeah, I mean, when you look at the old speeches that Zell Miller um, gave, I've done a lot of research lately trying to try and understand sort of what the program was. And um, folks did not like the idea. One of the, one of the proposals that was put on the table this year <laughs> at the Capitol that went exactly nowhere. Um, to fix hope was to put an income cap back on it. It was $66,000 was the original one when they started the program. Um, and then a couple years later, they took that off, raised it to 100,000 because the lottery was flush with cash. Um, but they ultimately, you know, now we're, we're trending down, right? That's kind of what the charts all show you, that it's no longer sustainable to fund the, the whole program with just lottery money. Because our lottery is 20 years old now, and it's sort of what they call matured. It's flattened out. The kinds of um, revenues that, you know, over the years when it was a young, growing program um, kept going up even faster than tuition and fees at school were going up. That was great. So they took off the caps, and, and now we're in this, you know, on the other end of the bell curve coming down 
where we need to prioritize what we're going to spend those dollars on if they're limited. And nobody seems to, we have this institutional amnesia, nobody seems to remember um, that it was originally a program not to cover kids who would have been able to afford college in any event. It was to grow that gap, you know, grow the number of students to bring us up from the whatever 30 odd percent to get to where we need to be to have a really a trained and trainable workforce and students who otherwise wouldn't have gone to college are going to be the ones who were originally the priority and arguably should still be the priority. But the biggest conversation at the yes, Capitol... Yes, ma'am. Sorry, Emma has a... Yeah. I wanted to ask, I think Vikram said that the low-income students were the one not getting the Scope Scholarship. Is well, that what you said? Well, what's happening actually, 10% of the scholarship is going to people who make $200,000 or more. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So uh, the point is, okay, um, so everybody who makes a 3.0 GPA, they are qualified. Mm -hmm. But so do you want to really give this scholarship to somebody who is making, well, when you say 200000 mm -hmm. it really has no limit. Mm -hmm. Somebody could make it a million dollar a year, they, they still could take that mm -hmm. scholarship. Mm -hmm. So, so yes. do you want to give that scholarship to somebody whose parents are uh, running three jobs and, and four kids, they deserve that scholarship? Or do you want to give it to somebody whose parents are making a half million dollars? So, um, and it's really two programs now. I mean, 